Hello again, this is Professor Bennett from DigitalAudioTheory.com. In the last programming example, we took a look at how to make a complex vector. And in this programming example, we're going to take that vector and rotate it, giving us a phaser. This is from Chapter 2 of Digital Audio Theory Programming Example 2.3.1. So if a phaser truly is rotating around the complex plane, then if we look at its angle, at different time points, it should be changing. So let's give this phaser a magnitude of 0 0.5. And we'll save this in a variable a. And we'll take a look at this phaser every 1 12th of a second, starting at time 0 and going all the way up to 0 0.5 seconds. And let's give this vector, uh, this phaser, a frequency of 1 hertz. All right. So if it's making a complete cycle in one second, then that means in half a second, it should make a half a trip around the complex plane, or up to pi radians. So we're going to set up a for loop here. We're going to start at time 0, and every 1 12th of a second, all the way up to half a second, we're going to do some calculations. Let's take a look at what those are. First calculation we're going to do is we're going to recompute our theta. Since this vector is spinning, its angle is going to change. Now this angle is going to be 2 times pi times f, sometimes called omega in other texts, 2 times pi times f times t. And that's going to give us our new angle. Let's go ahead and set this off at time 0 just so we can do some calculations. So at time 0 our theta will be at 0 as well. We're going to revisit this vv in one second so we're going to skip it for now. But the next thing we're going to do is we're going to build up our complex vector. Let's call it v. This is easy to do. We take the magnitude times e to the j times the angle, here theta. So that's going to be our complex vector. Now, if our angle is 0, actually we expect the vector to be entirely real. So all of the, this vector is showing up only on the real axis. There's no imaginary part at time 0. Next, we're going to do a little plotting trick. All right. So. I'm going to make a grayscale value that changes with time. Take a look at this right here. t max is 0 0.5, and t goes from 0 to t max. So this is going to give us a ratio between 0 and 1. And this entire side of the equation is going to give us a value starting at 1 and going to 0. So we're going to save that in a variable called gs. Now if I take 3, if we form an RGB triplet, we get a red channel, a blue channel, and a green channel. If we make all of those the same, it's actually going to give us a grayscale value. So while GS is changing from 0 to 1, we're going to get an RGB triplet here that's changing from light gray to dark gray. We're going to use that to differentiate the different time points. So we're going to use polar plot, same as we used in the last programming example. We're going to pass our complex vector. We're going to set the marker to be a circle. We'll make it fairly large, 20. We're going to set its color to this changing grayscale value. And since some of the colors are going to be pretty light gray or close to white, we'll give it an edge, a black edge, so that we can clearly see where it is. Now importantly, we must of course remember to hold on. That keeps everything on our plot in place where it is. So the next time we plot something new, it's overlaid instead of replacing what was there. So let's run this for loop and see what we get. You know what? I'm going to put a little pause in here and draw now.
There we go. It finally showed up. <laughs> Do you see them appear? Let's do that one again. Watch the animation. Boop. All right, cool. I put a time, a, a pause so that they showed up individually. So here's at time equals zero. The next one is time equals one twelfth of a second, two twelfths of a second, three twelfths of a second, all the way up to six twelfths or one half a second. Let's change its uh, axis units by grabbing a handle to the axis. There we go. There you have it. A phaser plotted at different time points on the complex plane. Now, octave is going to be a little bit different. This command right here is not possible in octave. But we can do a little workaround to make the same graphic. What we're going to need to do is keep track of our complex vectors. And at every subsequent time point, we're going to build up an array of complex vectors. That's what this VV is here. So it's going to be initialized to an empty set. And every time we compute a new complex vector at a different time point, we're going to append it to the previous set of time points, of complex vectors at different time points. And that's going to be saved in VV. Then inside Octave, we're going to use the polar command. We're going to pass it this series of time points, this series of complex vectors. Oops, sorry, this is a series of uh, angles. Oh, I'm sorry, no time points and, uh, and complex vectors. And this is how we're going to generate it in Octave. Oh, I hope you enjoyed. In the next programming example, we're going to take a look at uh, phasers again, but combining them together to create the phenomenon of beat frequencies. Until next time, thank you.